This video is going to show you how to find pressure depth. So here I have a graduated cylinder, so it's a nice simple controlled system. And in it I'm going to put three different fluids, different densities, so they're all going to float on top of each other. If I wanted to find the total weight at the bottom of this graduated cylinder, I would just add up the weight of each one of the fluids. But I want to find the total pressure at the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing, because pressure is just the force over the area. Basically I'm just adding them all up again. So to figure out how this works, I'll start with my definition for density. Density is equal to mass over volume. Now, since I want to talk about mass, I'm going to rearrange this. Rearrange it one, one, one more time. So it's mass is equal to density times volume. And we know that weight is mass times gravity. So therefore, if I look at this and rewrite the weight down here, I can replace the m with rho v. So the weight is equal to rho vg. That's the weight of the fluid, rho vg. Now if I take a look at a blue cylinder of fluid, and it recognize that it has a height and that the top of it actually at the top and bottom has a certain area to it and this height times area that's going to equal the volume that's great because weight is equal to rho vg so I can now expand on my formula a little bit and I can replace the v with an a and an h the area and the height so now I've got this longer formula now I'll switch back to pressure that's what I'm after is a pressure at the bottom pressure is equal to force over area the force in this case well, that's going to be due to the weight of the water itself. But I don't know the weight of the water. Instead, I'm going to use my other formula, rho a h g. But something nice happens. I can see the a in the numerator and a in the denominator, so the area is going to divide out. So now, this is going to leave me with rho g h. The pressure at the bottom due to the fluid is equal to rho g h. So that means that the pressure at the bottom of the blue cylinder of fluid is equal to the density of the blue g times the height of the blue. Okay, so let's focus on this formula. Pressure is equal to rho gh for a fluid. So pressure is equal to rho gh for a fluid, and each one of my fluids has a different height. Now what I can do is I can look at the pressure due to each colored fluid. Pressure due to the blue, pressure due to the green, pressure due to the purple. Notice that the density keeps changing for each fluid, and the height of each fluid keeps changing. Alright, the total pressure is just going to be the sum of these three pressures. So rho gh for the blue, rho gh for the green, and then rho gh for the purple. And that's going to give me the total pressure. Well, almost. See, I'm forgetting one other fluid. On top of this graduated cylinder, it's opened up to the atmosphere. So it actually has one atmosphere of pressure, because it has this long column of air going all the way up to outer space, and that's exerting a pressure downwards. It's nice because I don't need to calculate that. I can just write that as one atmosphere, which is 100,000 pascals. Now, actually, there are a few more decimals to it, but for us, we'll just round it off to 100,000 pascals. So, that's the air pressure on top. The key thing to remember here is the pressure at the bottom is equal to the sum of all the pressures above. All the pressures above. So, that gives us this formula. Pressure is equal to the pressure p naught, which is the atmosphere above the water, and the sum of all the pressures, which I wrote as sigma rho gh. Here's something we didn't talk about, plus force over area. So the P naught is for the air, the fluid above it. The rho GH is for each one of the fluids. But this force over area, that's for any solid object I put in here. But there are some limits to this. So if I take a look at this, and I put a small solid object in there, like that little white cube there, that's so small, it's not going to, cre it's not going to increase the pressure at the bottom. Because compared to the total surface here at the top, it's really, really small. So it's not really going to be anything noticeable. But if I change the size of it, so in this case that, that F over A is going to go away, and if I change the size of it make it large, about the size of the inside of the graduated cylinder, now it's going to have an effect on this. So at this point, the area of the cylinder and the area of the object that I put in there, they're going to be approximately equal to each other. So at this point, if I look at them, the F over A, that's something I have to account for. So I've got to figure out the force of that block going down, that solid block, divided by the area of that solid block. So now I know the sum of all the pressures, the pressure of the air, pressure of each fluid above it, and if I have any solid objects the same size as my vessel, then I know it's going to be the force of that object going downwards divided by the area.